Hello again, praise the Lord. Welcome to the weekly message here at World Gospel Mission Church. This is March 20th, 2022 message. Before we begin, let's all begin with the meditation of the week from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Continuing on with Song of Solomon, today's main text comes from chapter 5, verse 9, through chapter 6, verse 1. Song of Solomon, 5, verse 9, chapter 6, verse 1. What is thy beloved more than another beloved? O thou fairest among women! What is thy beloved more than another beloved? that thou dost so charge us. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand. His head is as the most fine gold, his locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices as sweet flowers. His lips like lilies dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet. Yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved. And this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Whither is thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? Let us pray. Thank you, Father God. As we continue to hear your words of prophecy revealed in Song of Solomon, may the Holy Ghost Anoint each and every listener receive understanding of your word of truth. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just as heaven is made of three different layers, God also created man in three different layers. The first is the atmosphere, the second outer space, and the third is the heaven where the throne of God is located. Likewise, the human body resides in the first layer, the atmosphere. The soul can ascend to the second layer through salvation, and the spirit can ascend to the third heaven, where the throne of God is. When a man lives without knowing God, only the physical body exists on the earth, with an unsaved soul and dead spirit, so it is impossible for them to see the living God. Living such carnal life is no different from a beast. However, when the soul is saved by believing in the gospel of Christ, 
it leaves the atmosphere and ascends towards the spiritual universe. So when a man is born again by the Holy Ghost, the spirit reaches the third heaven where God's throne sits. Apostle Paul testified of the spiritual position of those saved who are born again of the Holy Ghost to the saints of Ephesian church. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6. The spiritual position is also shown through the tabernacle that God commanded Moses to build on the earth. Those who have not been saved symbolize sinners, who are not able to enter the tabernacle and are outside. Those who enter the tabernacle, but are in the courtyard, believe in Jesus Christ, have their sins forgiven, but are not born again. This is the image of carnal Christians who do not understand the word of God. Then, there are spiritual Christians are to pray at the altar of golden incense in front of the Most Holy, being able to enter the Holy of the Holies in order to have fellowship with God and see His glory. However, even spiritual Christians who have fellowship with Christ may be temporarily sidetracked by the temptation from lusts of the flesh, becoming spiritually lazy, they stop praying and lose fellowship with the Lord. When the Shulamite in the Song of Solomon turned away from her beloved Solomon, she saw him leave and she suffered tremendous spiritual pain. Because of this, not only was she unable to get help from anyone, including the watchmen, the guards of the wall, or the daughters of Jerusalem, but she was rather badly wounded by them. Likewise, when Christians lose fellowship with the Lord, they cannot receive help even from pastors, elders, or other church members. Carnal Christians, just like the daughters of Jerusalem who never had fellowship with the Lord, unable to understand the Shulamite, said this to her, What is thy beloved more than another beloved? O thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved more than another beloved? that thou dost so charge us. Song of Solomon 5 verse 9 We need to meditate spiritually about who the Sol uh, Shulamite's beloved Solomon is and this another beloved is. Solomon is spiritually the Christ and the Shulamite is a Christian who believes in Christ and became his bride. Jesus Christ, like Solomon, no longer exists today in the flesh. The only way to meet Christ is through the Bible, the Word of God, written by the inspiration of God, testifying of Jesus Christ. In other words, the Word of the Bible is God. Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh. And He is no longer in the flesh, but in the Word. So the only way to meet Him is through the Bible. Unfortunately, there are hundreds of English translations of the Bible. Modern Christians love to read their preferred translations. However, all translations are from the Holy Bible, the first English translation, the King James Bible translated in 1611 during the reign of King James of England. The most preferred translation today is the NIV. However, the NIV can't be even considered to be called the Bible because it is the most corrupt version that contains over 38,000 revisions, adding and subtracting the words from the King James Bible. Just as the Shulamite was mocked by the daughters of Jerusalem because she only loved King Solomon, Christians who believe in the Bible are also being mocked by the carnal Christians. When they say things such like, How is the King James Bible that you love so much better than the NIV? 
Surely there isn't a problem in salvation through NIV. A Bible is a Bible, is it not? So why the trouble of using the King James Version? Those words are so archaic. Are you one of those King James onlyism people? And so forth. Neither the daughters of Jerusalem nor does Shulamite understood each other. The Shulamite is the only woman to become Solomon's bride and know him intimately while having fellowship in one bed. The daughters of Jerusalem, on the other hand, never met or communed with Solomon, having no clue on who Solomon is. Today, carnal Christians who are not born again do not realize they cannot have fellowship with Christ because they have not searched the scriptures and have not met the Christ revealed in the King James Bible. And Jesus made it clear to the unsaved hypocrites. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, and ye will not come to me that ye might have life. John 5.39 and verse 40. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17, verse 3. When the Shulamite had learned of King Solomon and her deep fellowship, she praised him as she witnessed to the daughters of Jerusalem. This is also the confession of true Christians today, who are born again and are in deep fellowship with Christ. Again from Song of Solomon 5, verses 10 through 16. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand. His head is as the most fine gold, his locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers, his lips like lilies dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with the barrel. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold. His countenance is as Lebanon, excellent as the cedars. His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely, this is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Unto the daughters of Jerusalem the Shulamite testifies in great detail about her fellowship with Solomon. As the Shulamite evangelized unto the daughters of Jerusalem, modern-day born-again Christians who have deep fellowship with Christ in his word testify of him unto the carnal Christians. We get facial features and details of Jesus as he ministered unto the Jews all the time outdoors. So his face turned ruddy or tanned. And that when he spoke, he would have exposed his white teeth. The Bible testifies that in the old days, when Samuel called David to anoint him, his face was ruddy. 1 Samuel 16 verse 12. Now he was ruddy, and withal, of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. The head of Jesus was like the finest gold full of raven black hair. As they put on a crown of thorns on his head, they mocked him and struck him on the head with the reed, and his head and hair were dyed red with blood. His beautiful eyes were properly set, as if washed with milk. When the Lord turned and looked at Peter, who had been following him from a distance when Jesus was arrested, Peter saw the beautiful eyes of Jesus and wept bitterly, because Jesus was right about Peter's denial. Uh, this is written in Luke 22. 
Jesus' cheeks and lips were like fragrant lilies, dripping myrrh, always giving off the fragrance of life. The Jews savagely nailed his hands, which were like gold rings encrusted with beryl. They slashed his belly that was like shiny ivory covered with sapphires, and they whipped and tore his flesh to pieces causing him to bleed profusely. His legs were like marble pillars, and he had such a strong and beautiful appearance that all sinners could lay down everything on him and trust in him. He was lovely because from his mouth flowed words sweeter than honey, purer than milk. And after hearing all these things, the daughters of Jerusalem finally knew who he was. And they praised the Shulamite as the mu most beautiful of all women, saying that they would join her to seek him. When Christians get to know the Lord deeply and testify of his beauty in detail, preaching the word, even the carnal Christians who are not born again and do not know the Lord well begin to know Christ by searching the Holy Bible themselves. Searching and finally finding him, they also finally receive eternal life. Jesus will return soon. He will come for his church first, the chaste bride of Christ before he allows the great tribulation to start on earth. He will then return on his second coming with the church to destroy the unbelieving world. He will then set up and rule his millennial kingdom here on earth. He invites everyone to escape the coming wrath and be with God the Father. Admit you're a sinner for not believing in the blood shed by Jesus. Repent and believe in this gospel how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent and believe in the gospel with all your heart. Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible as you study and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today. The day of salvation is now and today. God bless and have a wonderful day.